Welcome back, everybody. This is Bob Hollis back with you for another week of fun. Um, I want to start with uh, putting you at ease over a few things. I've been uh, comments from a couple of people uh, saying that the first session was a bit over their heads and they, they felt a little bit confused. Um, don't let that concern you because what I showed last week was something that only needs to be done one time and I can basically do it for you. And so I've already been uh, working with one person who's been joining me during office hours and another person I have some time scheduled with tomorrow. And for anyone else who's ha had some concerns or would like some help, uh, please just let me know and we'll get something scheduled. And I, I happen to be on Eastern time right now, so it's uh, nine o'clock now. And uh, so it's a bit off for me to help after class tonight. And I'll be here until uh, flying back next Monday. And I'll be back on California time Tuesday on. And we can schedule as much time as needed from that point forward to make sure that everybody's caught up. And once you've got this first one out of the way with the configuring the database and getting WordPress installed on all of that, uh, that's the hardest part, the most technical part. And it's nothing you ever need to do again. So I wanted to make sure we covered those things for people who want to have a thorough understanding of how everything works, but I wouldn't expect you to need to really learn how to do that. Uh, you only need to do it once. So we can schedule some one-on-one -on -one time over the next couple of weeks, and anybody who would like me to, um, I'll get online with you, and we'll get you all set up. So I can walk you through registering your domain. I can walk you through setting up your uh, hosting account, and then once your hosting account's in place, we can get WordPress set up and you'll have your own platform to work on. And if somebody would like a platform to work on uh, between classes and not mess their own site up, uh, let me know and we can do that as well using one of my other sites that I use for the classes that we teach. So with that out of the way, again, just uh, relax and look at what we're doing and don't worry about the details because I can help you with those. And today, uh, well, as you know, submit questions uh, for anybody who's, who might have missed last week's class. Submit questions anytime something comes to mind or raise your hand if you'd like me to call on you. And I'll see if I can unmute you. Uh, some people would prefer to have me read out the question. So either way works for me. But today, what we're going to do is, is uh, talk through WordPress and how it works and all the different things that you could do on the back end. And then we'll go into, uh, depending on how much time we have, we'll go into starting to set up plugins. And I also uh, created a form some of you completed. Others also said they ran into an issue with uh, we're getting a 404 error or something like that. So we'll take a look at that form together, too. And the reason I asked for that is to get an idea of where everybody is. And it seems like most people uh, do not have their uh, domain and web hosting and all of that set up. So again, I'll spend some time with each of you one-on-one -on -one to get that set up. And we'll make sure that that works out well and doesn't become a barrier to you uh, having your website complete by the end of this course. I'll help you as much as needed. So today, uh, we're going to be going through how things uh, tend to work on the back end. And then we'll talk about uh, the different things that we can do with it. And one again, one of the reasons for that survey was because I like to know a little bit more about what people are doing with their businesses, so that we can uh, we can build in those specific types of tools. All right. And it looks like we had uh, another person just join. Just to, to catch you up quickly. Uh, what I talked about for the first few minutes was not to worry about what we did last week. It's fairly technical and only has to be done once. And I'll spend time with each student one-on-one -on -one, uh, to get them set up and have their website in place and ready to go so that they can start working on it. So now you're all caught up. Um, so what happens when you first come to a website? You'll see that we've got, I went to conferenceregg.com here and I'm gonna just cut this part out for a minute. Typically, when you install WordPress, it's done in the main PHP folder, or I'm sorry, public HTML folder. And in that case, all you would do is hit forward slash, and then it's uh, wp-login, 
And this is the way you get to the login panel that looks like this. Now, in my case, I put things in a subfolder called Mobius. So that's why that's inserted in there. And then uh, once you've done that, now I have my password manager here. I'm going to take advantage of that and log in. And when I do, it's going to take me to the dashboard. And that's what you see here. So as soon as you log in to WordPress as an admin, this is what it's going to look like. Now, a dashboard is just what you would think it would be. It's just a few widgets that give you some general information about your site. And some of the other tools that we might add later uh, will add widgets to this area. And you can also control what you see by looking at screen options. So if I pull down that little tab, you can see I have checkboxes here for anything I want to look at. If I wanted to get rid of, uh, say, activity right here, I can just unclick this, and that whole box is gone. And I can come back and add it any time that I like. And again, after I add other things, say, for example, Google Analytics or anything else that has information that I want to see and make available right here, uh, many of them have of tools that you can put on the dashboard to get a good overview of what's going on with your site. From there, you've got a button here for updates. And the other thing you'll see, if you ever notice a number up here, it means that you have updates that are due. But there are also plugins that you can uh, put in that will automatically update your site for you. Keeping all your plugins up to date is very important, mostly for, for uh, security reasons. If you don't keep your plugins up to date, there's a good chance that you uh, might have a vulnerability in one of those plugins that could expose the site to a hacker. And of course, nobody wants that. Posts are something that you could think of like Facebook. So when WordPress was first created, it was created as a blogging tool. And that was primarily what it was all about. And then it, it began uh, getting more add-ons and features and things like that to where it became a full-fledged uh, uh, CMS system. So with posts, that's exactly what they sound like. And there are different ways that you can post content in, in uh, WordPress. Generally, it's going to be posts and pages. You want to use pages for your more static content. So say, for example, a... Um, a contact page, a page with bios, a page with your list of services, most of the things that you'd see in a menu somewhere in your top bar menu. Posts are what you would use for things that are more passing in time. And you can create unlimited categories and tags for the posts. We'll, we'll go into that in a second. And then make a post just like you would a Facebook post. Now, before you do that, you have to have a page to show those. So out here, I uploaded just the generic theme I made. It was actually for a, a, a music festival coming up uh, for Halloween. And I see a question here, will we learn how to update plugins? Absolutely, then it's very easy. Uh, it's basically a, a one button click. And so you'll see how to do that before the end of this class. So uh, what I did here, I just used a theme from another site that I'm working on. This probably doesn't look very good, but if I, I'll show you what it looks like where it belongs. This happens to be, I run the uh, green team for a local music festival we put together several years ago. We're actually on our ninth year. This is all the team that keeps the grounds clean and does all the recycling. And uh, so I set up a quick site for volunteer registration, resources and contact. And to give you an idea of what you can do with WordPress, uh, this whole site took me 45 minutes, I believe to put together with a registration form. So here's a form for people to register and shirt sizes, you know, all the things that we might need for the festival, a waiver, resources. So all the information for how they check in, contact form, and just our homepage. And all of this probably took uh, 45 minutes from start to finish. So it might seem like uh, something tricky when you're first looking at it, but once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to do and very easy to do quickly. Okay, so right now I don't have anything showing on our homepage, but first let's take a look at the survey.
uh, apparently some people were getting 404 uh, warnings. So I want to fill it out myself and let's see what happens. And I uh, will repair it if needed. All right, so I'm just using information stored there and uh, randomly grab a few here. Test and submit. Oh, is it ah, okay, there we go. So it says confirmation page, thank you for completing the survey. Uh, so if any of you wanna try that, go ahead. Otherwise we can just communicate uh, via email. I think you all have my email address um, or the chat box, whichever is good for you. So all I was uh, asking for, it's not, not that critical, is basically do you have a registered domain? And from the information I've seen, uh, most people do not. So if you don't, don't feel like you're behind. Think about uh, what you want to do, which what you want to have for a domain. Then you can go ahead and register that on GoDaddy if you like. Um, and you can use GoDaddy or NameSilo. There's one that I like also, NameSilo.com. It just takes a few minutes, and it's, uh, I think, about 10 or $12. Then that's for a year. And one of the reasons I like Name Silo is that it offers a free privacy, whereas GoDaddy charges an extra 11 or $12 a year, I think, for privacy. But what I was looking for was that. Do you have a registered domain? Do you have a web hosting account? If not, we'll need to do that. And if you do happen to host through GoDaddy, register your domain through GoDaddy, you can also get your web hosting there at the same time if you want to. And then third, do you have WordPress set up on your account? So since most people don't have either of these, they also don't have that. And so if you don't, don't worry about it. You're not behind. Then we can schedule some time to get online together one-on-one. Then I will help you walk through and set all of this part up. And here's the part that's uh, the most important from a functionality standpoint. So some of the things that you'd want to use on a website, of course, are forms, um, e-commerce. So you can sell anything that you'd like or set up an affiliate account with something like Amazon, a video gallery, photo gallery, uh, social media. You can have links to your social media account. You can have feeds from your social media account into the website. And you can also use social media share buttons. And that is what allows people to propagate your content out to their social media accounts. You can also do paid membership content. So suppose you do uh, reviews or reports or something like that, and you want people to be a member on your site to be able to participate and get that content, then you could do something where they pay for membership uh, for a year or whatever you want it to be, whatever period of time you decide, monthly, annually. And then you, when you create content, you can click a category to say who gets to see that information. So you might even have... Uh, you know, gold, silver, and bronze members or something. And then you can click on the on how you want that classified when you create content. And then only people who are at that level or above would be able to view that content. Uh, sliders are just what you think, you know, a, a slideshow. A uh, blog is where you could make posts and have people comment and interact. Uh, advanced editor, we're gonna do that anyway, and I'll show you how that works. And that's just advanced compared to what they offer in Gutenberg. So it, it gives you tools similar to what you'd find like in Microsoft Word. Uh, search engine optimization tools. That can be a very powerful tool that can allow you to compete with anybody in the world. So if you know how to do search engine optimization, you can determine how your site appears when people search. So if you are doing say environmental work, you want to make sure that you use the right words, uh, keywords, which is not really the same as it, what it used to be, but the right words within your context rather than something you label or tag as a keyword. And with that and using the right titles and making sure you do the right thing with images, uh, you could get your content to come up pretty high in the rankings, whether it's somebody searching on Bing, Yahoo, or Google, or DuckDuckGo. Uh, which I think uses the same uh, backbone as Bing. 
Uh, but don't quote me on that. It's some I mentioned. I, I need to look that up to be sure. Um, and then security tools. Every website should have security right from the time you're starting to build it. Newsletters. Uh, you can do some pretty cool things with newsletters, including expanding your business or your message or getting word out about your services. And I like to show people how to do things efficiently. So there's a system you could put together here where you can make a post and with that post, it could go out to uh, all your different social media accounts and populate your website and populate your newsletter all at the same time. And you can have newsletters for different categories of people. So if you have clients in different industries, for example, you could have a newsletter focused on each industry where you describe uh, and put articles that are related only to those people with uh, things that might interest them. Language translator, we can put in a translator that is pretty good, not perfect. It's, it's based on Google Translator. So it'll translate any content on your website into any of about 200 languages, even right to left languages. So if you know there's certain languages where they read from the right side of the page to the left side, it'll flip your whole site and translate it into those languages as well and just reverse all the information. Uh, Google Analytics is important to know what, what's happening when people reach your site, how they're getting there, and what they do when they get there, which pages are most visited. And you can build basically funnels that get people to your call to action uh, and see how, how you can get them from coming to your website immediately to taking the action that you'd like them to take once they get there. Uh, maintenance mode is just what you've probably been seeing here right now. Our maintenance mode is off, but you can turn that on to keep people out when you're developing your site. So it gives you a chance to log in and see what's going on without exposing half done work to the rest of the world. Uh, PDF Embedder, anybody can upload anything and just have a link to a PDF to download, but there are also tools that allow you to embed the PDF into the site so that people can flip through the pages uh, right on the website without having to download and open it, or even do it like an ebook, where it, you know it's like turning a page. In fact, people use uh, PDFs to publish and produce ebooks. And we already talked about the social media share buttons. But then anything else? So I think I noticed somebody was a realtor. Um, I built a realty website for a company in San Francisco that has 5,000 buildings that they rent out. But you could also use the same type of program as an independent realtor if you wanted to put your properties up on the market rather than use a site provided by a, uh, you know one of the big real estate companies that often give them to their agents anyway. So think about the things that you might like to do with your site, what would be important for your business or your goals, and just send me an email if you like, and we'll take it from there. And then, of course, if you're having trouble with these first parts, uh, registering a domain, setting up a hosting account, and getting WordPress onto your account, then let's just schedule one-on-one -on -one time, and you can either show your screen, and I'll walk you right through it, or we can talk, and uh, you set up the accounts, and just give me your information to log in. And what I'd recommend in that situation is, you uh, register a domain or set up an account with a GoDaddy or whoever you want to use, which takes five minutes, and then also set up your web hosting, which takes five minutes, and then create a temporary password and give that temporary password to me. Then I'll take it from there and get everything set up for you. And then when I turn it back over to you, change your password again so that nobody has it except you. And that's the best way to keep, keep things secure. All right, so once, you, once you're there and you have all this set up, it's gonna look similar to this, except it'll have the template that just comes default with uh, WordPress 2019. And when you log in, you'll see that back, just like we talked about. So right now you can see that there's not really much out here. We're just showing an empty home page, and I created a page called blog, which is just where posts will be, and this is the standard default first post for a website, for a WordPress site. And then this is just the page where we put our survey. So if I wanted to show uh, more posts, this is the page that they would show up on. 
And you can also make your home page work that way. So if, for example, you wanted to um, just have your home page be your latest blog information, then you can set that up as well. And it's very easy to do just down here in the settings. So you would go to settings and reading. And you can see here, it says your homepage displays. I could choose latest posts or a static page. So I chose a static page, selected homepage. I could have picked any page that I want to be the homepage. And then for my post page, I picked the page that I made called blog. And you can see here, you can show how many you'd like to show at a time, how many syndication feeds at a time, whether you're not, whether you want full text or a summary. And because this site isn't going live, I don't want search engines to start finding it. Uh, so I just left that on. And then save your changes and it'll look just like ours. And we'll go back through some more of these settings later. But again, a lot of these things, uh, you do the one time when you're setting up your site. So it's good to know how to do it if you're in the process of that or if you want to change something. But it's not the kind of thing you need to memorize because you're going to have to do it every day. The things you do frequently, you'll remember very easily. These other items need to generally be done once, so you don't need to worry that much about learning how to do it. All right, so let's go say that I, I was going to make a new post. Well, first, let's look at categories. So we can create a category. Um, I'll call this, let me see. Um, just conference posts. And when I do that, I can also pick parent categories if I wanted to. So right now we don't have any other categories. I'm just going to save this one. And let's just say I, I wanted to have different day of the week categories as well. So I could make this Monday. And the parent category is going to be conference posts and save that. And I can do Tuesday. Parent category conference posts and do that. Now, even though this is, I don't like when things are inconsistent and sloppy, even if we're not going to keep them. So I want to capitalize that for consistency. Okay, so that's how you'd make a category. Now, if we wanted to, we can show posts from a specific category on a specific page. So we might have, let's say we're, we're putting in events and we have several events per day in different places. We could create categories for every day. And then when we create an event, we just tag it for that day as a category. And then we show only posts from specific categories on pages that are labeled uh, Monday through, uh, I guess, Sunday. And then you put those, you tell those pages to only show the events that are categorized to the day that they represent or reflect. So that's all that you would do there. It's pretty simple. And that, that's how you create the categories. And then you can also do tags. And tags are just uh, like hashtags. You can think about it like that. And people can assign those to make it easier for others to find their information. Um, but they're not required. And you can do it as you're making a post as well. So now that we've got our categories. We know what tags are. So if we go up here and look at all posts, this is that generic post that's already comes as part of WordPress. I'm going to go ahead and trash that. And now I want to add a new post. So I'll just call this demo post one. And I might want to add some graphics. So I'll do add media. And I don't know how big that is. Um, let me see if I have anything on my desktop. So I can do that, then select files, upload them I'm here. I would just, uh, uh, here's a funny one. I was just at, this, at the Monday night football game, uh, was that a couple of days ago for the Steelers versus the Bengals. And uh, this was a picture we got before the game. So when I go to choose to put that into my post, I could I just select it from here. You know, I uploaded it in 
And now over here is where you put alt text, your title, description. And I'm just going to call this. You you normally want this to be something that works well for search engines. I'm just going to call it Steeler Game. And I'm going to copy and paste that to alt text. And the alt text is what you see when you hover over. So it's not that important for a lot of people. But for others who have visual impairment, uh, it may be because they use screen readers. And the screen readers will look for and read out the alt text. And I could also put in a caption. If I were to do that, it creates a bar below the image. And then it puts the text in the image. Well, it looks like the image. It basically creates a frame at the bottom, puts the text inside the frame. And I could also do a description. Uh, which has some value but limited and then i decide how i want it aligned so if i align it left we're going to have a text wrap right so if there were a whole lot of text that i put that image in on the left then all the text would come down the right side of the image and then across the bottom or underneath the bottom so that it wraps around the image if i choose center the text is going to go above or below the image and it's going to be blank on both sides. If I choose right, then the opposite of left. So it's going to tax, text wrap right. So the text would, uh, the the image would be on the right side. And as you typed in text, it would fill it on the left and then go down, drop down below and go all the way across to complete filling in. For now, I'm just going to leave it aligned left, insert it into post, as you can see there. And then we could go in and put in, you know, any kind of text that we want here. Well, that's not looking very good that way, but you get the idea of how this works because it's aligned left. Let's see if we can squeeze it up in there. It doesn't want to do it because I've already got the text set up that way. But this—that's how it works. So if you, um, if you want text to the left to wrap, what I should do is pick some lorem ipsum. I'm not sure how many of you know what lorem ipsum text is, but you've probably seen it. And for a long time, like hundreds of years, it's been used since I believe the 1500s by printers when they first started printing. And people thought uh, for a long time, and this is what the text is, it always starts with lorem ipsum dolores sedimet. So it turns out that in recent uh, centuries, People thought it was just basically gibberish that was text holder used by printers. And so if you wanted to see how something would look, but you didn't have the text yet, then that's how you do it. So you use this text and you put it in there and that's how you can, oops, the line left. I think this editor is messing with. Yeah, this is a an editor that um, I added that's uh, not working the way the normal WordPress editor works. But I will fix that before we um, before we jump in any further or do something more with the text. But it it won't do that for you. It's only doing it because of the specific theme that I'm using. So that's how you can add an image and add text. And it turns out that this is uh, more than 1,500 years old. It was written by Marcus Aurelius. So now we can publish this and we can put it into any category that we like. I'll just do that and publish. And there you have a post. So if I were to come out here and refresh, there's the post we just made. Okay. And um, uh, somebody just asked, uh, why use text that you cannot read? Well, the point is that this would just be for a placeholder. So, yeah, it's an example. And the reason printers would use this is because they wanted to show how something would look. Like, so if they're doing a mock-up, it doesn't matter what the text says, and they don't want to distract with the specific text that they might not have it. So they would do a mock-up of the brochure or whatever they were working on. And then they just use this lorem ipsum text as placeholder text.
that's all that's for. So we would never publish that on a live website. But suppose we were putting together a website and just wanted to see how it would look for a client and they were going to create the text. You could use something like this as a placeholder and set all the rest of it up and then go from there. Okay, so that's all you need to do to make a post. And you saw that would show on our post page. Uh, media, this is the media library. So you can add any type of images that you want in advance, or you can add them in later uh, while you're creating a post. So I showed an example while we were creating a post, how I uploaded that. But I could also upload, like, you know, bulk select and grab a whole bunch of them and upload them from my desktop to put them in later. And they all sit here in the media library. You can choose to look at them this way or like that. You can filter based on the month that they were uploaded or the type of images that they are. And that's where you'll store all of the images that you'll be using on the website. Uh, forms, this is one that we added. This was Gravity Forms, and that's the one we're using right now. So I'm not sure why that one's uh, giving people some issues, but I'll look into that. It's not as important as uh, for us, for our purposes, because you can just email me the information. But I use these on literally hundreds of sites, and they generally work pretty well. So in this case, let's say you wanted to create a form for something. I'm going to click uh, New Form. And this plugin we're using is Gravity Forms, by the way. So I'm just going to call this uh, Demo. Whoops. It's supposed to be Demo Form 1. I guess we're going to leave it at Demo. So that's fine. This is what it looked like when you first see it. It looks like it's kind of a mess, but um, it's it's really easy to use. So right now, it's just giving you directions. So you can see it says start over there, and they're pointing you to the side of the screen, and select a field type, and then click to add a field, and then edit the field options, and drag to arrange fields, and save your form. So all the instructions are right there for you, and you'll see how easy that is. So almost every form starts with a name, and for some reason, they think that's an advanced field. So I'm going to click name, and there it is. Now, within this form, there are also a lot of options you can do. So here where the name is, if I click the drop down here, I can decide whether or not this is required. And if I'm going to require it, then I'll click that box. You can see I could change the label, and I could also put a description down here if I want to. I could say something like, please enter your name and close that up. All right, now let's say we also want a phone number and maybe an email address. And maybe we want to know if, um, well, let's, I'm just going to make up some questions here. And you can do a survey for anything. So I'm going to ask a yes or no question. And in that case, I'm going to use what's called a radio button. A radio button is what you use when you can only choose one of a long list of answers. So let's say I'm going to ask the question like, um, do you drive to work? Do you drive to work? And this would be a simple yes or no. And since I don't have a third choice or I don't want one, I can click here to remove that option. Just keep these two. And I can decide if this is going to be required or not. So I'll say yes, why not? All right, now I'm going to save my work just to keep it in place. And now suppose I want to know if they drive a car. So I'm going to put in another radio button or have a car. And I only want to ask that question if they're driving to work in this case. So I'm going to say, do you own a car? And again, we'll use yes, no, 
Okay, and this could be required or not required. Now here I'm going to show you something pretty cool that um, they call it advanced. But it's not really that advanced. It's just a neat feature. So we're going to use what's called conditional logic. And what that means is I, can, I just click the advanced field. I'm going down to enable conditional logic. And I'm going to say show this field if all of the following match. Do you drive to work? I can pick the question is yes. So now the question, do you own a car, will only show up if they say yes, they drive to work. All right, and now let's suppose I want to have something where uh, they pick more than one of many options. So let's say, uh, where is, or what? Make of car do you drive? So we can say here, Ford, Chevy, Toyota. That's good enough for the example. And um, I'll say, are is plural in case people have more than one car. And the idea for this demo is that they can choose more than one. All right. And then let's say we want to make uh, something for comments. So I'm going to use paragraph text. And we'll just change that title to comments. And update. So now we've created a form. Now I happen to know because of this theme, I need to make an adjustment somewhere. So I'm going to go into the styles and layouts. And you probably won't have to do that unless you use one of these themes. And I'm going to go to radio buttons and just add some padding in here. And I'm going to do the same with check boxes, five pixels per side. Okay, so now we've got this form made. I can go to any page. So forms are what we came down to next. And you can do a lot of things in here, but I don't want to dive too deep into the weeds because uh, as you play with this stuff, you'll see all the different things you can do. Like you can import and export all of the entries as a CSV file. There are numerous add-ons that make it do different things. Like you can take uh, payments through PayPal if you're doing an event or something like that. Uh, lots of different tools and features that you can get into through these settings. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and put it on a page. So I'm going to make sure I save that. I'm clicking Update again. Now here are pages. And pages, again, are something that you would use for more permanent content. So right now, all we have, we have a confirmation page. And that's a landing page for one of the forms. So if somebody were to use that uh, form, that's where it would take them afterwards. Uh, and somebody just asked where I saved it. So I'm going back up, uh, I'm going to go back to forms. And this is the one we just created. I'll click edit to reopen it. So all the way over here on the right where it says update, the first time you click, it'll say save. And then if you make any changes, if you come back and change something, then it'll give you the option to update uh, since you've already saved it the first time. So over there uh, below the field boxes. Okay, so now I'm going back to pages. And you can see what we have so far. There's the blog page. This is a confirmation page so that when somebody fills out a form, I could have a land on that page. And you can have a different one for each form and say something like, um, thank you for submitting your data, um, and the information on this page might also be helpful for you. Now, depending on what they select in the form, you could even have them land on different pages. There's our home page, which is currently blank. Here's a privacy policy, which everybody has to have now. It's the law, and a lot of websites out there don't have them, but they really should. 
And then here's the page where we have the current uh, web dev survey. So I want to add a new one for the survey that we just created. So I'm going to click add new. And you can do a lot of things in WordPress from more than one place. So I could click here to add a new page, or I can go down here and click add a new page. I'll just do it here for now. And so uh, here's where I can, you know, put in MO form two, I'll call it. I guess I should call it, I'll just call it demo form page. And all we have to do is up here where it says add form, I'm gonna click, select a form. And I can choose to show the form title and description if I want to. Not going to do that. We'll enable Ajax. There's some advanced options, but they're not much worth doing anything with. And insert that. So whenever you see something in a WordPress page that has brackets like this, that's called a short code. And it's pretty handy because it allows you, if the developer created their software using short codes, with a short code enabled, you can use that short code to uh, render do the same thing that code would do itself without having to put all that code into a page. So if I hit save here or publish in this case, you can see what that looks like. Nothing here, but if I view the page itself, there it is. So there's name, phone, email, do you drive to work? What make of cars do you drive? So is it out? All right. No. Toyota. And gibberish. Submit. There you have it. So the default is thanks for contacting us. We'll get in touch with you shortly. But you can also have it redirect to another page instead. So let's say I were asking people what kind of car they drive. And I have, you know, and I ask more like what year is it? what's the make, what's the model, what's the year. And then I know of, say I sell auto parts. And if you said, I drive a uh, 2000 Toyota 4Runner. Well, I happen to know the 2000 Toyota 4Runners, actually all of those Gen 3s is, uh, is what is, uh, has, has problems with lower ball joints. So I could have them, let's say they complete something and they said that's what they drive. Boom, the page they land on could say, Toyotas are generally known as being very reliable cars, but the Toyota 4Runner that you asked about happens to have an issue with lower ball joints. So if you have more than 150,000 miles on your car, on your vehicle, we suggest you get it checked out. Here's where you can learn more, buy parts, and link it to the parts, you know, one of the parts that we saw. Uh, I have a question here. Is Ajax what created the short code we saw? Um, no, that was created by Gravity Forms, which is the form plugin. Gravity Forms can use Ajax as a means of uh, rendering the forms effectively, uh, but it's not required. So you can choose to engage Ajax or not, but uh, Gravity Forms itself is what created the short code. And a lot of other plugins will create short codes for you as well. And then you just paste those short codes into a page somewhere. And that's how you can make those functions appear within the page without having to write any code. OK, so that was just an example of forms. So you see how those work. You saw how I created a page and was able to um, edit it and then add the form. And that's how that works. So once you have pages, um, you could create anything you'd like in those pages, and then we're going to add them to the menu. So I'll just add another page here, and I'll call it just uh, menu page. And that's kind of a silly name, but we'll play with it and do it, use it anyway. Uh, again, we can add any text that we like in here, any images that we want, forms, and these are what you would expect from an editor. And if you've noticed by chance that something seems to have disappeared, check that bar.
because if you toggle it, a whole second row appears of the items that you might need to use in your editor. All right, so I'm gonna, over here on the right, you can see you have an option to display a title, display footer. If you want a certain background style, you can do that. Display a header image, background image, uh, background body style. So these are all different options that you can play around with. Background body image. And they're just what they say. When you go to schedule something, you can schedule it as a draft or as pending review. So suppose you have somebody working on their site for you and you want to review anything that they do before it gets posted, you can tell them, go ahead and create the content, but put it in as pending review and save it. So now when I do this, save as pending. And now that's not published, but if somebody were else, else were to come in and take a look at my work, then they can say, okay, that's, that's exactly what we wanted. Thank you for that. And now I can go ahead and publish. The other thing I could do is uh, schedule it to go out later. So right now it's published immediately, or I can put in a date and say publish on this date and time. So what some people do if they have an active blog is they'll go in and create a whole bunch of content, say the first week of the month, and then just schedule them to all go out Monday through Friday for all through the month so they don't have to keep an eye on it every day. Now that we've got that saved, I don't think we've changed anything, but I always, just out of habit, I click update. And now we can add this page to the menu. So if we go back out here and look, all we have is our homepage, dev student survey, and block. What I wanna do is add that new page to the menu. So I'm going into appearance and menus. And this is our menu, menu one in the right location. So we know this is our right menu. All I have to do is uh, select that and add to menu. And there it is. And then I can slide that around any way that I want also. And this is how, if I move it into the right, you can see that it would be a submenu item if I saved. If I leave it here, it's a top level menu item. So I'll go ahead and click save menu. And now if we come back out here and look again, there it is, menu page one. There's no content on it yet, but we wouldn't expect it to be. So that shows you how to make a menu. If we wanted that, say, to be a sub item, I can slide this in a little, save menu. Now, if I come back out and refresh, say go to the home page, you can see it doesn't show up there anymore. But if I hover over, there's the drop down. Now, this is not designed very well. As I said, we're just playing around with it. But um, this is a sub menu item under here. You can see that neither of the other two have that. If this were a real website, I would make this bar match that size and all the colors would be the same. So you'd probably have a black bar with a red and orange um, text, whether it's hovered or not hovered. So that's how you do that. So you now know how to come in, create a post, add images, create a form, add pages. Uh, comments are just comments that people made on any post. So if you had a post out there, somebody can comment on it, you'd have a whole record of them here. Appearance, there are a lot of things that uh, show up in appearance. One is themes, we've talked about that a little bit ago or last week, um, just in the very basics. And we're gonna go a lot deeper into themes, but I'll give you an overview of it now. So if we go to themes, uh, this was a generic theme that I uploaded that I mentioned earlier in the class. And one of the reasons is I put a whole bunch of widget positions in that theme that's a lot more than you'd find in most themes and it makes it easy to work with. But if I wanted to add a new theme, I can click Add New and I can choose from anything here. Now, that's this is nothing. These are you know a handful of themes. There are literally thousands of them that you can choose from. 
then you can do it based on while well, those are featured. Here's popular. Then of course the popular are the most popular are the ones that uh, are put out by WordPress. Hello Elementor, that's probably an interesting theme for us to play around with later. So I might install that one. Yeah, why not? And Elementor is a page builder plugin that makes building pages really nice and makes the layout very nice. So we might want to use this theme in a little while. The, of course, so the theme is the lightweight starter theme. We recommend it together with the Elementor page builder plugin. They work perfect. We'll come back to that when we start talking about plugins because Elementor is one that I would definitely add. And if we wanted to add another theme, just to see what we want. So we looked at popular. There's latest. Favorites, if I had a favorite, I could save it there. Or you can go to filter feature, feature filter. So let's say I wanted one for education and it's gonna have custom colors and custom background, be accessible, have accessibility ready. I'll just leave it at that. And the type of layout we want, I'll say grid layout. So you can apply these filters it looks like only one came up. We'll go ahead and install it. Now, when you're installing it, that just puts it into the system for the use. You have to activate it before it would show up on the front of your website. So I'm going to go back to all themes. You can see what I mean. So these are all the themes that we have installed right now. And this is the one that's active. Probably shouldn't be. We didn't even look at that, but let's go take that now. Okay, it didn't do much. Let's just move the menu over here. As you can see, we have our drop down, put the title there, got rid of that header, and put the page title here. And then there's Agama, Agama Blue, Nucera. In news X. Why not? We'll try Agava. All right. They're just asking there if we want to upgrade to the pro version with for a discount. And here again, this theme keeps nagging us to put in Elementor. Uh, I'm going to dismiss this notice, but we'll do that in a little while anyway. And then here they want a rating. Um, I don't want to do that. And again, we're back to the themes that we have available now. And we can put any in. So this one's active. Let's go see how that looks. So there's how the old theme looked when we had Elementor there. When I hit for fresh, it'll load the new theme. There it is. So not much difference. The reason it all looks so blank, of course, is because we don't have anything on our home page. You can see how it changed the menu and the drop down and the colors. And there's our home button. And the reason it looks different than this is because of all the art. So they'll often make a, a theme look beautiful. And then when you go to use it, you find that the reason it was beautiful is because of all the art that they included that you don't have access to. That's never a fun thing. So let's refresh and see what that was. It looks pretty much the same. Um, they modified some of the things up here in the menu. And here's one for news. News X. Go back out and take a look. Oh, yeah, that's the one we had in the other day. So you see how fast and easy it is to change themes. We just don't have a lot of content in there right now to make it look good uh, within the theme. I'm going to go ahead and activate this one again. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so now you can see we're basically just down to a menu and a home page, which is all good. And let's see, making sure we didn't uh, 
Okay, you're not missing any questions. And that, all right, so let's look at what else is in the back end. So, so themes you can customize as well. But we won't get into that right now. It's a little bit um, technical for this class. Widgets are the boxes that you see all around, all around a site. So in this case, if you were to look at this theme here, you can see there's a widget down here on the side. Um, this one actually looks more like posts. Over here, these are probably widgets. But any place where you see a block of information, that's a widget. And I'll show you again, this is the site theme that I created. So if I know where all the widgets are. So if I go to widgets, you'll find that a lot of sites, if you buy them off the shelf, might offer you five or six widgets and that's it, widget positions. And the reason that matters is that you might want to do a lot more and customize your site with where you want to put everything. So I create quite a few. So this, for example, is left sidebar. That's the one that runs all the way down the left side of the page. Here's right sidebar. I don't think I need to tell you what that is. Then I have uh, content above widget area one or zero zero, area one, area two, area three. So it's a grid with four sections. And this is uh, content above the, that area. So you can uh, put more content in and line it all up and organize it well. Here's menu above widget area, menu below widget area, the MSS slider we made, uh, content below, and one through three again, zero through three, I should say, and then full width below blocks, one through three. So in this case, we have these blocks, one, two, three, then boxes, and then below that, we'd have a full width box. So you can imagine what that would look like, or we'll just put it on a page and I'll show you. And these are where you can add some of this content. So let's say, for example, let's look what we have out there. I don't think we have any sidebars on this one. No, no sidebars there on this theme that we're showing particularly. But this is where you would add any of those. So if you wanted to add a login form, for example, and you had a sidebar on the right, then you can open this up, slide in the login form, and then finish all the details here. You can see that's where the devil is in the details. So you can fill out the details for all of that and then save it. And I want title. So what am I going to call that? Widget demo one. How's that? And we can put it on all the pages. Save. Okay. So we, we I, don't, I don't think we're showing any widgets on these pages though. So when I refresh. That doesn't show up anywhere. So let's go back to pages and take a look at them. All right. Okay, so there we go. So on pages, you can also password protect them. So let's say, for example, we didn't want the public to get to the student survey. If I click quick edit, I can choose the password protect it. So something simple like CowCap, for example. I could also uh, change themes. So you remember how we were talking about the, the, the page and it needing a sidebar. So you can see I have it set up here for 80% width with just left sidebar, right sidebar, two quarter sidebars, 80% two sidebars, uh, left sidebar, no sidebar, right sidebar, two sidebars. That's because I built the theme that way or with these different templates within the theme. So for now, we're gonna pick one just so we can see what a sidebar looks like and then uh, 
add some things to those widget positions so you can see what they do. So here I'm going to go, let's do this one, a thousand pixels with a right sorter uh, quarter sidebar. So I'm going to make that the theme for this Web Dev student survey page and update. So what happened here is because I didn't have any content assigned to that widget area I just created in the sidebar, it put something in as by default. But what I would want to do is go back here to that page and appearance, widgets, and look at what's what's there. So right sidebar, you can see all we have here is a login form widget demo one. Oh, there's nothing there. So let me uh, do that. And say so you wanted a list of your pages, for example. Click that. This is says for optional showcase template. I'm not sure why they're why they're saying that. We're gonna sort by page order, select all. And we won't need those. And I just say page listing widget. Okay, so that should put that on the sidebar here if we're not being messed up by caching, which is what we are. Uh, caching occurs at multiple levels throughout the site. So you remember, may remember last week when I pointed the DNS to configure it on Cloudflare, it didn't show all the DNS settings, uh, which are there now, because it takes a little while to propagate, but that's what's going on there. And then you can also put content, um, well, this is specific to the theme, but that's how widget areas work. So when you know where they're located, here I know from the coding that I did, then I know where I can put content anywhere around the website. And some of the gener general options that are available as soon as, it, as you start a site, well, you've got archives for any of your old content, uh, you can see here's audio. So you've got an audio player, a calendar. Now, don't be confused with a regular calendar. This one is a calendar of your site's posts. So if you want, um, if you want a, a calendar where you can schedule things, then that's one of the things on our list when we're looking at plugins, is to look at how to put in a calendar. And it's it's fairly simple too, but you do it usually from Google or wherever your other calendar manager is. And then there are some plugins as well that you can use if you want to. Uh, custom HTML, that's if you'd want to put in code. And I'm going to show you how to create HTML without needing to know how to code. It's kind of built right in within WordPress, but uh, people don't realize it. So sometimes if you want something to look a certain way, you won't get that option within the within the parameters of the plugin that you're using. So there might be a plugin that allows you to put in HTML code, but it doesn't have a WYSIWYG editor, and you want something in there to be read or bold, and you don't know how to make it that way with the code, I'll show you how to do that. And that's when you can put this one in as well to have it look the way you want it to. And form, again, this is like a gravity form, so you can tell it where you want it to be. Let's say I wanted it in right sidebar. That's where it would be. So here's the right sidebar. And you can see that I just added the contact us form. You can choose again what you want to display. We don't really have a contact us form, but that's okay for our purposes. Oh, and you can see where this is to hide the widget. So if you select those, it hides the widget. That's why this wasn't 
going on. So let me get rid of that. So for example, suppose you wanted it on, not on the front page, but everywhere else. You can click here to hide on front page. So I'll say save there. And then this one, same thing, save. And now if we come out and refresh, there we go. So there's your page listing widget and the contact us that we just added to that side block. And that can be done anywhere within the website. So you'd have to be careful. You don't want to put something like that above a menu. That wouldn't look very good. But you can put it any place where there's a widget uh, position, and which is another reason I like to make my own themes is because uh, that way I can create pretty much unlimited widget positions and put things anywhere that I want to without ever having to code something. Menus, we've looked at briefly, but let's take another look because there are a lot of details in there. So for now, we've got just the menu location checked, and this is what our menu looks like. We again can slide this all around and create the hierarchy that we want among all of our menu items. It's generally best to avoid drop downs when possible. So put either an extra menu item or you click a menu item, it takes you to a page, then that page maybe you have 10 other options. But drop downs can be difficult for people to use on mobile devices, and that's where a lot of our traffic's coming from these days. It's more than 50% now mobile devices hitting websites. If you're just in the process of getting started, you might want to click automatically add new top level pages to this menu. And what that means is when you create a page, I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to uncheck and just save what we did. And um, we'll come back and look at pages. There was something I didn't show you there about how you can create a parent page. And we could talk about what the reasoning for that would be. But for now, we've just got our regular pages here. And we to add one, you just you know click and add like so. That one's already there. So I'm just going to remove it. And then, of course, always save. I didn't really make any changes yet, so I don't need to. Now, if it's something else, uh, first of all, this is just showing most recent. You can click here to view all. You can click here to search. Now, those are pages. You can also do that with posts. So you can include a post somewhere on the menu. The other thing you can do is custom links. So if you wanted a menu item that linked out to, say, a third party like GoDaddy or something like that, you can put that URL in, and you can make the text say anything that you want it to say. I generally advise against this. Your menu is where most of your content and information should be. Now, uh, if you put something like this into a menu link, and somebody clicks that, they're just gone. They're off your site, and they're looking at the other site. And so you're not likely to get any sales or any further activity from that. Categories. So let's say that you, um, we created these different categories for posts, and you might want to show all the posts from a particular category on one page and not on any other pages. So you can create a menu item that just shows posts from that particular category, and then you can create a bunch of them. So just going back to the car example, suppose you had a site where you're selling parts and uh, people are coming onto the site for that purpose, then you could let them choose a tab, and that tab would only have posts related to those cars or whatever else it might be. You know, it could be cars or flowers or saltwater fishing versus freshwater fishing, uh, any other way that you want to break down information related to posts. OK, so those are all the different ways that you could use a menu. And then there are also custom menu plugins that can be used for uh, different types of menus. All right, checking for questions, looking good. So moving on. Um, header isn't that important. You Well, I should save what I'm doing here. OK, so we just saved the menu like that, but you get the idea. And here again, if you're working on a lot of pages, you can say automatically add them to save you a step and then come back and uncheck that later. This is just a way to uh, 
to edit a header and it's particularly useful based on the different type of uh, page that you're using, but we don't need to use that today. Theme options are gonna be different based on, again, the theme that you have. So it won't be the same. Uh, this happens to be the theme that I created. So this is the back end of that and all the different things that you can do with it. So you can set things for footers, you can choose colors. I usually do all that while I'm building the theme and just leave it like it is. And this one has a maintenance mode that you can click to take the site offline for the public, but I don't usually use those either. I use a different plugin for maintenance mode. Uh, theme editor allows you to hand edit the code, which you normally would not want to do. So I'm going to say I understand here. Uh, what happens is, especially if you're using a commercial theme, so or one of those themes that you can just choose to download and engage, like whenever there's a, the one that I showed you earlier, where if I go to pick one, I can select from anybody else's themes and just upload them. If you do something like that, there may be updates issued every once in a while. Then if you were to come in here and edit your own code, when they do an update, it's gonna overwrite your code. And, it, and you might not wanna get in here at all. Um, you probably won't have to, but it's also very simple to do. As you can see, for example, if I wanted to change the font weight here, I could just change that to 800 or whatever I want it to be and then save. And this is a style sheet. So this is what determines how things look on your site uh, all the time, all over the place. And you want it to be consistent. So that's why you write CSS. And then when you're putting the code on the pages, you make sure you just apply the existing CSS and cascading style sheet is what that stands for. So you don't have pages that look different based on who created them or what they decided to do on those pages. And these are all parts of the theme. So uh, the most important, one of the most important, of course, is the, well, they're all important, but functions PHP is the one that tells the site what to do in a lot of cases and how to behave. And then down here, you've got all these different types of content. So you can go in and customize those as needed, but that's beyond anything you normally have to do. Um, and if you do need to do something like that, just talk to me and I'll take care of it for you. It's, it's the kind of thing you'd only need to do once and there's no point in you learning so much just to do something one time. Uh, plugins, this is where all of our functionality comes in. And we're going to install some plugins before the end of this session. And I'll also show you how to update them. Uh, but that's a very simple process. We can add new. And then there's a plugin editor that also allows you to edit the code of the plugins. So no matter what type of site you're building, no matter how sophisticated, uh, some people will say, oh, I don't want WordPress. I'm, I'm going to pay to have a custom code or make exactly what I want. A lot of these tools that we're using took thousands and thousands of hours to code. And then they're made available to us for free. And because they're open source, you can have a coder go in and change things to do what you wanted to do if they know how to code. And that's what this plugin editor allows right there. So instead of going with just the code that they gave me, I can use the plugin editor. And I know what they're saying here. They don't want you to mess up the code. In this case, it happens to be a Kismet. But let's say, for example, any of the other plugins in here, let's say, for example, Here's uh, Gravity Forms. It's gonna take a minute, select. So this is the code for Gravity Forms. It's all right here. This is what it means to say something's open source. We can log in and we can see all of the code. So let's say, for example, you had, you were setting this up for a client and right here, there's a URL for help that is this URL, gravityhelp.com, plugins, gravity manager. Suppose I had my own page that had help for gravity forms and I didn't want them to leave my site. I can come into this code and I can change that and have that go back to my site instead of their site just by changing the URL and save it. So that's a pretty simple thing. If I do a little bit more about coding and wanted to uh, work on an array or 
just change these actions or hooks, then I could do that. And it's all right there. And this is nothing you need to know how to do, but it's good that you know it can be done because that way, if you were going to hire a developer to do something for you, you can say, this is what this you know plugin does right now. I would like you to add this feature. <clears throat> and then if you're going to do something like that, you want to also rename the plugin or there are ways so you can do it where you can isolate your code so that when the plugin's updated, it doesn't overwrite your code. That could obviously be pretty frustrating. Uh, again, this is nothing you'll probably ever need, but you should know that it's there in case uh, you're working on something more complex at some point in the future. Here are the users. <clears throat> I'm the only user right now. If I wanted to add a user, I can click add new, put in the username, which is the one thing you can never change on a WordPress site. So if you create a username, you can't go back in and change that username later. You're stuck with it. But what you can do is uh, create a new user. So instead of doing the username itself, <coughs> um, if, uh, let's say that I put in uh, Robert W. Hollis for my username. And then I put in my email, my first name, last name, et cetera, create an account. And then later I want to change my username from Robert W. Hollis to Bob Hollis. What I would have to do is create a new user called Bob Hollis, find the old user's uh, post to me, and then delete the old user after I were already had the new account. So in effect, it works the same way. You're just inheriting the history. All right, let's check the question box. Oh, good. Okay, so that's all you would do to add a new user. Username, email, first name, last name, and then they'll generate a password for you. And when you, you can pick what level you want them at. If you have somebody just working on content, I would recommend making them an editor instead of administrator because they shouldn't have need to go beyond editor for this type of stuff you want them to do, unless they're also working on the plugins and building out the site for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that without creating. And then you can visit your own profile either by clicking here or up here in the top right where it says edit my profile. And that's where you can just make your own choices here as to what you wanna do. So I'll go ahead and put, First name, last name, display name publicly as nickname, just make the same. Okay, and then you can put a little bio. That's more important if you've got a blog and you've got active bloggers. So people want to know who those bloggers are and you know what they do and that sort of thing. You can put more information there. I don't need any of that here, so all I really need, I'm going to add those names and just update pro. Um, tools. There's not a lot that you'll need here, though it's good to know if you ever do need them, you have an import export option. So suppose I build a website and I'm having trouble migrating it because something's wrong somewhere, but I'd like to export and save as much of it as I can and then import it into another WordPress site, I can click export, and it's asking if I want all content, posts, pages, or media. What I usually do is I'll download one that's everything, and then I come back and do each of these individually, because sometimes you can run into errors when you're doing a transfer that it takes too long and you lose your connection or something. So if I break it down and I do posts, pages, and media separately, I'm more likely to get them all through and updated without any issues. But it happens very quickly. You'd be surprised how quickly you can migrate this stuff. Um, site health is just what you think it is. It gives a general report and tells you things that you can do to improve your site. You'll notice one of them is um, remove inactive plugins. That's always a security thing. If you're not using it, get it out of there because it's just another vector through which you might get attacked. Uh, same thing with inactive themes. 
and they're recommending updating PHP. Let's see what they have us on. They're not showing us what, what level of PHP they think we're on. I We should be on at least 7.2, but I'll take a look after class. And then one of the more recommended modules are missing. That's probably the recommendation from the theme. Uh, I see. They're saying that uh, iMagic should be installed if possible on the server. I'll take a look at that as well. That's also beyond anything you need to know for this class, but I do have access to those settings to look into it. Now, because of the new laws uh, called GDPR, I think it's, I don't remember, it might not be English, but it's the, it's the um, European Union passed laws that are general protection rights, basically. And so every site, even if you're not in Europe, you can be sued by a European. If your market's over there or people come and visit and you're not complying, then even as a US-based business, you can get sued by somebody. So you wanna make sure that your GDP are compliant. Part of that is allowing people to um, export and erase personal data so you might notice that Facebook recently has increased a lot of the things that you can do with them. And then you've got settings. You don't need to do much in here. Um, and this was just a plugin I added to edit the gravity forms because of those issues that I mentioned. And that's pretty much it. Uh, maintenance is just the, the plugin that we use to take the site offline. So that's an addition that you also would normally see until you load it. Okay, so just to quickly review, if you were gonna come in and you wanna create content and you wanna add it to a website, you log in, you end up on your dashboard when you log in. You can come here to create a post. You can come here to create a page. And then when you're done, you can go to appearance and menus to add your new posts or your new page to the menu. And that's it. Okay, so are there any questions so far? Not seeing any. Let's see, I saw somebody said that was confusing. Oh, that was just the uh, text that we used. So, um, okay, I answered that one. Okay, I think all the questions are answered, but uh, keep them coming in and I'll address them as they land here. So now that we have uh, all of this down, you have a general idea of how all of this works. We wanna start adding some features to the site. So I'm going to go back here and just take a look at what people said they'd like to be able to do. So I'm going into our forms, the student survey, entries. And a lot of those look like they were me practicing. Okay, different functions. Those were mine, I'll ignore those. So e-commerce, social media links, social media feeds, paid membership content slider. Looks like somebody wants to learn it all. Good for you. Okay. Uh, photo gallery, social media links, security tools. All right. Well, one of the things I like to start with is security tools. Normally, I would have done that in our last session um, the, as soon as I start setting up a website. But we ran just a little low on time. So the very first thing with security is you should have an SSL certificate. Notice how this says not secure up here in the top left. That's because we don't have um, we don't have an SSL in place. An SSL used to stand for a secure socket layer. The technology has changed in terms of, of what it really is. So it's not really a secure socket layer anymore, uh, but it, it works the same way. So we still call it an SSL. It doesn't work the same way, it serves the same basic security purpose, people are used to it, so we kept the same name. Now, I'm gonna use Cloudflare to get a free SSL. 
There are free SSLs available through a lot of hosting services. Um, others were used to charge for it. So I really liked using Cloudflare because it was free and it's easy to manage. So you may remember last week that we uh, started to put the name server or the register this domain on Cloudflare, but it wouldn't show any of the DNS yet because it had fully propagated. Now it's got all of this showing. So you can see this is the IP address where all of the site is hosted. And what they want us to do now is change the name servers. So I currently have the name servers pointed at my server. And now I'm going to change them to Alex and uma.ns.cloudflare.com. And this is another side thing. Uh, before anybody gets too concerned, if it looks confusing, it's another one of those things that only needs to be done once. So once everything's set up, you never have to come back and do it again. So when you go through this process, or if you'd like help with this process, then we get online and I'll do anything complicated for you. If there's anything at all in this class that feels over your head, or you just are concerned that it's going to slow you down because you can't get through that breaking point, um, let's schedule some time. I'll get online with you one-on-one. -on -one. It'll just be the two of us. And we can use this tool that we're using right now to either share your screen and I can control your mouse or walk you right through what to do. Or if you want to, like I said before, just send me the username and login information and I'll go in and take care of all of it for you. When the next time you come to class, it'll all be done. And then you can start playing with the fun stuff. So for now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this as a step in our security. So I'm gonna copy that domain name and I'm gonna go into the domain manager. Hopefully GoDaddy didn't kick me out for being gone too long. Now we're good. So I went to earlier before class, I like to stage things to save time on sites loading and all of that. I went to my GoDaddy account and I'm, I'm lately using name silo more, but I've had this one for a long time. So it's still on GoDaddy. I opened up the domain that we want to change and I went into DNS management. And this is what it means when you say, um, when you say change the name servers. I'm just gonna click here and I'm gonna change that from, normally you wanna write these down just in case you need them. I know these because they're mine. So I'm gonna paste there. And then the second one was Uma. So I'm pasting and then just changing Alex to Uma. Like so. So these are the name servers that Cloudflare asked me to put in to complete propagation. Okay, so that's what I'm doing and I'm hitting save. Now it'll take a little while. Um, as you can even see, there's a note up here that it'll take a little while before it recognizes that those are those have changed. Right now they're changing it at GoDaddy but it also has to propagate through the internet. So there you can see that that's done. Now I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me just grab this from here. I showed you some of the tools that I used the last time and we talked about propagation. So I save all these things. Here's uh, dev DNS tools, new DNS info. This one's my favorite because normally you go to different places for all of these. Right now, what I want to do is check propagation. And I know it won't be done yet, but I just want to show you what that means. So if I click go. Oh, so according to this, it's already fully propagated and is uh, pointing to the new server. Or no, I'm sorry. That's not the case. It's still pointing at the old server. So it should be uh, seeing this on Cloudflare, but it's still seeing it back on my IP address. But that's just fine. That shows you an example of how, how long it takes. So we'll come back in a little while and that'll change. Now, in the meantime, it won't affect us because um, if it goes to here or stays where it is, it's still going to show the site. Once it's fully propagated, it'll be added to here. So we can do, let's see. Let's see if it recognized that yet. 
Yeah, it's still waiting. See how it tells me log in at the GoDaddy account and replace these name servers with these. We already did that. Yeah, but like it says here, typically it processed within 24 hours. It's normally within about a half an hour, an hour. You don't really have to wait that long. And then here, uh, these are all the things you get totally free with Cloudflare. This is one of the reasons I love it. Uh, analytics. And again, there's nothing to show here because it hasn't even propagated yet. The DNS we just looked at. And what you would do with this is see how these warnings are here. If I were to add all of these features to Cloudflare by just clicking like so, you can see those go away. And what that does is hides your IP address from hackers. So if you're doing something like this, and that's probably all we need to do for there, uh, you're hiding all of this from hackers because it's all running on a proxy now. So it makes your site more secure. And then here, this is that free SL, SSL um, that I mentioned. So we're still waiting for, for um, we should be waiting for this to go through, unless it did already, which I doubt. Um, but once it does, we'll also have a free SSL certificate. There's a firewall that keeps people from being able to hack the site. Um, access, speed, caching. I will go through all these, but just... Uh, Suffice it to say that it's all free and all very useful. And what it can do is keep your site from going down when you have a lot of heavy traffic and you might not have a very robust server. But like, for example, one of my clients has a, a magazine and they get a lot of traffic. So if I go to, let's see, resource, get this out of the way. Here's resource recycling, which is a magazine. And if I now go look at their uh, analytics, you can see what happened here. So out of all these hits, let's say the last 24 hours, they had 152,000 cast requests out of a total of 221,000 requests and 68,000 uncached. What happens is Cloudflare basically saves us a copy of your entire site online in the cloud. And when somebody goes to access your site, what they're really seeing is a, a cloned image of your site out on the cloud servers. So when they hit it, they're not even hitting your whole site. So the resource recycling site used to go down during these peak periods when they're getting more than 20,000 requests. But now you can see almost all of those only hit Cloudflare. So it doesn't even touch the server. So now the site never goes offline. And that's all free through Cloudflare. So I'm a fan, and I think you will be too, especially when it's all free. You can't ask for better than that. All right, so let's see. I'll try one more time, and then we'll move on because it's not uh, critical at all to what we're doing. So it's still saying pending name server update there. And we know we did it. So that's an example of why we need to wait for it to propagate. So we'll go back here to our site and just let that take its course. Now, along the lines of security, there's a couple other things we'll want to do. Um, one, there's a couple plugins that I'd want to add because of using Cloudflare. And there's another one that I add to all my sites. So I'm going to plugins and add new. And security should always come first, in your mind especially. So we'll say WordFence is the one that I like. Here we go. So you can see more than 3 million active installs with a five-star rating updated recently, so we know it's staying compatible. So I'll install that. and activate. Okay, now here they want you to put in a 
and address to be informed of what's going on. I'm already on all their mailing lists, so I'm going to say I do agree, no, and continue. Uh, they're going to make me do it anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to use this one. Okay, so no and continue. There we are. I don't have a premium key, don't need one. I'll say no thanks. And now I can go over here to my word settings. But one of the first things I do to keep myself from getting locked out of my own site, which does happen. Okay, they want to give us a little walkthrough. I'm just going to skip through those. But what we're going to do is um, whitelist our own IP. So whenever I see something like, do you want it to stay up to date automatically? I always say yes. And now it wants us to optimize this for the um, host. I'll click to configure. And it wants you to download these just in case something gets messed up, there will be a backup. But I've never once seen it mess up anything, and I've probably used it close to 500 sites. And continue. And they're saying that worked just fine. So that's done. And then what I do is, uh, again, I want to I want to whitelist my own IP address so that I can't get locked out. So if I go here to firewall, okay, we did that. And you look at, uh, here's blocking, firewall options, help and rate limiting. So let's start with blocking. I'll show you what that does. Here's where you can add an IP address for a country. Uh, so you could say, don't let anybody in from that country at all. All firewall options. Advanced firewall options, force protection options, rate limiting, whitelisted URLs. A whitelisted URL is not the same as a whitelisted IP. So don't get confused about that. Here's where we want to whitelist IP addresses. And this uh, allows you to say, for example, you have a security setting where if you log in with the wrong uh, username and password, you get blocked. Well, you want to make sure you don't accidentally block yourself out of your own site. So what we're going to do is add our own IP to this whitelist. Find your IP. You can open up any tab on the internet. And I like using what's my IP dot o, oops, o -R -G. And it tells me. So no matter what computer I'm on, I can always type that in to see what the IP is. And that's going to change. So you have to be careful if you're traveling to hotels or something like that and you're worried about getting locked out. Uh, you can whitelist the IP for that hotel while you're there, but be very careful about how you're logging in. Uh, don't use an insecure login at the hotel. And then also whitelist the IP from there. And you're setting yourself up to possibly be hacked. And so uh, what I'm doing is just copying this IP address. I happen to be at a venue that I, I know is uh, limited and it's not a hotel. Though I am in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania right now. So I'm going to take that IP address, copy it, go back into firewall options and paste. So that's it. So normally... Say you have, uh, you could do it with your home computer and with your work off, your office computer. And if you're going to be out of town sometime, uh, you might want to check the IP address wherever you are and whitelist that while you're working on the site. And then when you're done, remove it from the whitelist so that uh, you're not leaving that open to vulnerabilities. WordFence also protects against all these different types of uh, potential hacks cross-site scripting, SQL injections, these are pretty typical. So it'll even look for um, Slider Revolution. It happens to be a WordPress plugin that they found the vulnerability for. So they built in a tool for this. And then there's brute force limiting. So here's where you can determine how many login failures, how many forgot password attempts. I'm usually much tighter than this. And don't think that you won't have hack attempts. I guarantee you will. 
By the time your site's up a week, I guarantee you that there will have been at least one hacking attempt on your site. And that's because um, there's hackbots that are out there. There are hackbots. And they go after everything. And they don't care uh, what it is. They want to use your server. They want to use your website. They can put stuff up there that you don't even know exists to host malware that gets loaded somewhere else. So they can use your server and your platform as a place to put um, bad code that's going to cause um, that's going to cause uh, problems for you whenever you uh, try to do anything. And I always like to also immediately lock out invalid usernames. So this is the way you can set up your security. It's also, again, just something you, you do one time. So once we're done here, uh, you can immediately block fake Google crawlers. OK, and that's about it. So I'm going to save changes. And now my security is in place there. All right. Let's see. Um, I've got a couple more questions here I'm going to get back to. So I see one here that says uh, lots of maintenance required. Um, no, once, once this is set up, you never have to do anything with it again. So this is just adding a layer of security to the site uh, with the WordFence plugin. And it also has, I haven't used it, but let's just take a look. Uh, back when we were looking at plugins, I noticed when I typed in WordFence that there was also a WordFence. Here, let's just look for it. Uh, WordFence Assistant provides data management utilities for WordFence users. Uh, I think this is supposed to make it simpler, but I haven't tried it. Um, I'll take a look before I recommend it but that might make things easier for you. Uh, but it's not really complicated. Once it's in once, like you never have to go back again and it'll keep your site safe. Okay, next, um, where do I locate my IP address? Uh, cPanel rep asked for it. And also ask if I can confirm if you have a Linux server that's able to run cPanel. Uh, yes to that. So we do have uh, a cPanel. And you shouldn't have to buy cPanel though. Depending, cPanel's been asking for licenses lately from people, but most of the web hosts will provide that for you without charging you. So I'm not sure why you were asking for uh, talking with a cPanel rep. You hopefully won't need to use a cPanel rep now because that'll be provided and they'll deal with the license. But we are on a Linux server. Um, and I'll, and you're not uh, you won't be hosted on my server anyway. You'll be hosted on the server wherever you set up your uh, wherever you set up your hosting account. But again, to find your IP address, just go to whatsmyip.org. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to send that out in the chat box right now to everybody. Uh, it will also start adding all of these resources to the web page that we're working on so that you have them available there. Okay, so that should take care of that question. Uh, we need a reference sheet to remember these updates and how to protect ourselves. By the time we're done, we're going to have it pretty much fully automated. So the things that I show you and tell you about, like, for example, keeping your uh, plugins up to date, we can put some tools in here that'll help automate that whole process. So you don't have to worry about it. And when you, when you do update, um, you want to process in where you can also make backups. So we're going to put in a plugin to do backups that'll make a backup every night, and if you want it to. And then you can also have a tool in there that'll do updates on all your software every night, so you don't have to worry about it. And then. Reference sheet to remember all these updates, protect ourselves. Again, that'll all be fully automated by the time we're done with the site. Uh, next, we're focused on managing our business. This seems a bit complex. Remember right now, we're just building, we're building out the system. Uh, once the system's built, 
then it's pretty much maintenance free and hands free so you can focus on your business. And we're going to be adding a lot of uh, tools in for people to manage and run their businesses. So again, I mentioned I saw one person's a realtor. There are plugins you can put in to have all your listings and things up there. Um, there are plugins for pretty much anything you might want to do. So once the site's up and running, it's kind of like if suppose you decided you were going to build and run a restaurant. Okay, you only need to build the restaurant once, and then you just operate it. And that's what we're doing here. We're currently we're pouring the foundation, installing the electrical, installing the plumbing. But once all those things are in, all you have to do is know which way to turn the faucet for hot and cold water. And that's where we'll be by the time the course has ended. And we've we've gone through, I think it's scheduled for nine weeks. Um, you're going to have a finished website that all you have to do is go in and add content. And I, I see I see an OK, fingers crossed. Um, no need for fingers crossed. I'm, a, I'm on your team. So for each and every one of you, I'm committed to making sure that you have a fully functioning website by the time this course is over. And so I will schedule one on one time with you as much as needed, even if I need to personally build each one of your sites to get it done, we'll get it done. So don't let that worry you. And just uh, remember, the, you know, I'm a little bit tight this week because of my travel and I've got a bunch of things at Carnegie Mellon uh, starting Thursday through all day Friday and then Saturday and Sunday and then I'm flying back on Monday. Uh, so I'm going to be tied up for those days. But starting next week, I can get on online with you anytime and uh, we'll schedule some time and I'll get you up to speed and we'll get all this done. So don't worry about uh, learning all this and absorbing it to be able to redo it yourself right now. I'd say focus on uh, just watching and getting a concept, getting the big picture for how it all works. Because once you have that, then the rest of it all starts to fall into place. And once the site's done, all you're going to be doing is depending on what type of site you have and what you do with it, you'll basically be going in and creating posts, updating pages, and adding pictures. And we might have a slideshow. So if we do a slideshow, then you'll be adding images to your slideshow. And if we have uh, music, you might be adding audio files. But all of those things will become second nature, just like posting on Facebook. Probably the first time you did it, it seemed kind of strange. And that's the same here. But once you've done it a few times, the things you do every day will be incredibly simple to do. So let's say, for example, I've logged in and I've got all these different pages and I want to edit something on a page. I want to change some text or add some text. I would log in. I end up here. I come to pages. I just click all pages. I click the page that I want to edit. Let's say confirmation page. I add whatever I want. And I hit save. That was it. So those are the kind of things you would be normally doing on a regular basis once your site's up and running. And I'm going to help you get to that point. And we're going to get to that point before the last two classes so that we'll have everybody's site up and running. And the last two classes will be primarily review where we just continue answering everybody's questions and helping them uh, get done anything else that they'd like to accomplish. So we've got word fence in, and that was security. So you think about that, that you just installed security that will last a lifetime and keep automatically updating itself. And we still want to get that SSL in. So I'm going to come back here and take a look and see if this is propagated yet. No, they're still saying complete that. So we're just going to let that ride. We might come back and touch on that next week. Uh, what that does is that gives us this SSL that we're talking about. And then that will allow us to have an SSL in our uh, URL. So this would be HTTPS and show as secure. And um, again, that's pretty easy. We're just waiting for it to propagate. Okay, so um, 
that's for the most part all we need to do for security. Between that one uh, plugin and Cloudflare, and uh, there are a couple other plugins we want to add that go together with these things. So I'm going to add new. And I'm going to get them in here and get them in place, but we don't want to set them up until Cloudflare is uh, finished with its propagation and setting us up. But one that we want to put in is Cloudflare. So I'm going to add that. Oops. Ah, gives my typing on a different keyboard. Okay, so you can see here is the Cloudflare plugin created by uh, part of the Cloudflare team. So I'm going to install that now. But since Cloudflare is not live yet, I'm just going to let it sit and I'm not going to activate it right now. And the other one I want to add is called Really Simple SSL. So All right, and I'm going to install that one. And that one just helps managing manage the SSL settings on the on the back. Then you can see right now it doesn't have an SSL, so I'm not going to activate that one either. But we have them in place for when we need them. So there's Cloudflare and really simple SSL. So when we're ready, all we need to do is click Activate and set those two things up. Now, I'm going to add another tool here that makes it really nice uh, for editing pages. You can really, really uh, do a lot more with it than you can with the standard WordPress um, WordPress editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is click again, Add New. And this one's called Elementor. We're going to spend a lot more time with Elementor in our themes section. It's the Elementor page builder. I'll click install now. And you can see how they describe it. The most advanced front end drag and drop page builder. Create high end pixel perfect websites at record speeds. Any theme, any page, any design. And that's what I love about this. You can use it on any page, no matter what theme you're using. And it comes with a video, so it shows you how to use it when you first install it. I've been using it on a lot of different uh, sites, so I didn't don't need to go through this right now. And we'll be spending some time on it together uh, whenever we get to the theme section, which is uh, today was the review of, of content management system, so that's what we did. And then next week, we're going to focus more on the plugins. So if any of you want to email me between now and then, about any type of features that you'd like to use. So think about what your business is. If you've got a consulting firm, you might want something where people fill out a form and tell you what type of services they're interested in. If you have, um, if you write books, you might want something where you could use e-commerce and an Amazon affiliate account to sell your sell your own books online or retail other people's books through an affiliate account. If you um, or an attorney or a, a CPA, and you want to book time with people, you can put a booking calendar on where somebody can come in and, and book certain times. And once they book those times, then those times get blocked out so somebody can't double book. But they can come and just book your services directly online. So one of the things that you might want to do is uh, look at all of your competitors. So think about the business you're in. Uh, do a search, do a, an internet search for that business in your area and see who else is out there and what they're doing and take a look at the functions they offer. And you'll probably find consistency among, let's say, the, the top five in the industry. So if you go to the people who are leading the industry in your field and look at the different tools they provide for their users when they visit the site, make a list of those, send that list to me, and we'll make sure that your site has those same types of features. Because chances are, if the person or the other sites you're looking at are 
the hundred million dollar companies, they know they've done the marketing research, they've done the user studies, and they know what users want when they get there. So take advantage of that research to use the same general type of um, offerings and make sure that you have the same tools and things available on your website. And that also, believe it or not, helps with Google rank. Uh, Google takes a look at the sites that seem to be leading any industry segment. And in some ways, the closer your site layout and functioning is to that, the higher Google will rank you, which seems kind of strange, but they've got a pretty complex algorithm that sometimes they don't even understand. Okay, so we're getting uh, close to 11 o'clock here. I'm gonna see if any other questions are coming in. Other than that, this is probably a good time to stop. And not seeing any. So uh, next week we're gonna focus on plugins themselves. So just send me an email and let me know the plugins that you'd like to use for your site. In the meantime, uh, you might wanna also book some time with me for next week when I get back to California and we'll get some time scheduled directly one-on-one -on -one, and I'll help you through whatever you need to do. And all of these things that I've shown you right now took you know a couple hours for us to do, but that's because I'm explaining them as I go. If we get um, if we get one hour on time to, online together, I can get any of you to this point in less than an hour. If you have your domain set up, if you have your domain registered and your and your um, web hosting account ready, then I can do all of this really quickly for you. And you can even just, if you want, um, go into your domain registration and set up a temporary account. Or if you're using GoDaddy, uh, I'm I'm considered a GoDaddy Pro, and so as a GoDaddy Pro, you can put my uh, my email address in, and it'll allow me to have access to your domain without needing your username or password. I can just get in and do the work that I need to do. But otherwise, what I'd recommend is register your domain, set up your hosting account, and then put in a temporary password. You know, call it Bob Hollis Password 2020 or something like that. Let me go in and do the work. Once the work's done and you're all set, then change the password back to what you want it to be. And that way I don't have it. Nobody should ever have your passwords, including me. I, I mean, I, I'm obviously trustworthy or I wouldn't be telling you that, but it's just a good habit to not give out your normal passwords. And um, even when the hosting accounts I use want to help me with something and they need to log in, the first thing I do is change my password to something else give them that temporary password. And when they're done, I change it back to what I want it to be. So one way or the other, either sending the information to me and just letting me go at it and get it done for you, or um, us getting online one-on-one -on -one and me walking you through it and us doing it together will work and we'll get y'all caught up. And once we're done, you're gonna have a really nice site that all you have to do is log in and update. You won't have to add plugins. You never have to install WordPress again. You never have to set up WordFence again. These things are all just one-time things. But I promise this class would take you from knowing nothing to understanding how it all works together to having a finished site. So if I didn't include all of these things I'm showing you now, you wouldn't really be getting the depth of knowledge that you should. But once it's done, um, it's kind of you know using that restaurant or a car analogy. Right now we're building the car. We're putting in the engine, we're putting in the brakes, we're putting in the locks and the doors and the windows. Once we're done, all you have to do is get in and turn the key and drive your car. And uh, that's what we're aiming for. So I'll take the time to do that. Uh, somebody just asked a question about how do we book time with you, email. Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, again, I'm on East Coast time right now, and the rest of this week is already pretty booked. I always do also have office hours. I'm doing an office hour. Uh, uh, every Tuesday and Thursday at the same time. And you have the link to log in for that. I already know some one person has been coming to all the office hours. We got all her site pretty much uh, this far. We're waiting on a few more components. And I've got a couple of people that have already booked time with me for tomorrow. So we should probably start looking at uh, next week for booking time. And I already know that I've generally got time open during the day on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday next week. 
So if you've got any time available then, or if you have a day job and you need to do it on the weekend, I can also do things on Saturday mornings. So I'll work around your schedule and we'll get it done. Okay. So with that, um, I see a thank you and you're quite welcome. I enjoy doing this and then enjoying, uh, we'll enjoy working with each of you. And if we do have one-on-one -on -one time, uh, we should talk more specifically about the business you're in as well. And I could possibly help you with that while we're building out the site in terms of the types of tools and things that you might want to install and even possibly introducing you to some networks or marketing techniques. All right. So uh, that's all we have for tonight. And we'll pick it up uh, here next week. And I'll be in office hours again uh, next Tuesday, where I'll be back in beautiful California. So thank you all again, and I'm uh, looking forward to the next class. Bye now.